following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verana Media Network. Greetings everyone and welcome to an episode of Gen XYZ. Today we are speaking to you on a rather interesting topic which has not been discussed as often in Sri Lanka. Today we are talking about drama and theatre in Sri Lanka. Now, this dates all the way back to the King's era and then move on to the colonised period and is now quite prevalent in society as well. Drama and theatre has been a mode of communication for artists to express their emotions and also issues in society and also more commonly as a mode of entertainment. So joining us today are two well-known artists in, this, in the industry who is Shalini Korea and Julian Anderson. Thank you for joining us on today's program, Julian and Shalini. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So before we start on today's uh, introduction, could you all give us a small, a brief as to what you all have been doing so far in the industry? What has your experience been like and how do you all start on drama and theatre in Sri Lanka? I'll start with Shalini first. Uh, yeah, sure. So I actually started doing drama in Sri Lanka when I was really young, like, like mm -hmm. when I was seven or something, I just really liked acting, so I just started then. And then I, was, I went to ladies college, so <coughs> I did quite a few drama competitions and Shakespeare drama and that kind of thing. In-house drama as well as outside mm -hmm. of school. And then I was like, okay, okay, now I really like these things, so I really want to continue it. Um, so then I went to uni um, and I studied theatre and political science, I did a double degree. And yeah, I just came back to Sri Lanka like last month. So I'm yeah. hoping to get back into the theatre scene here again. So you've been in drama for quite a number of years now, I believe. Yeah. In so, some capacity. Yeah. Nice. And also now, Julian, tell us about your experience in drama and theatre in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. All right. Um, actually, unlike uh, Shalini over here, who has had a prolific uh, career in theatre. Say prolific. <laughs> uh, I had a, my, I had my growth spurt in theatre a little after uh, college. Actually, in school, I was <coughs> more into sports. I wasn't the one who actually studied that much. Uh, but uh, I was more into sports in school, mm -hmm. and theatre wasn't the thing I would do. And um, as soon as I left school was where I had a, an epiphany nice. and uh, theatre came to my rescue at times when I, I actually needed it. I was really down um, <clears throat> mentally, emotionally and uh, at, at this point I, that's where I found theatre. And uh, I started off by acting with something very different to a person with their sports mm -hmm. but um, it's where I found my calling. That's so you where moved I from sports to acting industry then? Yes. Well, um, <coughs> when I was in school Sports was the only thing I, I knew. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing I had my focus on, right? It was just sports on and nothing else. And then uh, I got injured and uh, I couldn't continue sports. And that's where, you know, this whole thing uh, pulled me down. Mm -hmm. nice. But then, you know, theatre came along and uh, got my spirits back up. And, that's and here great. we are. Great to hear. And Shalini, I think you've been involved in international productions as well, if I'm right. Could you give us a brief on uh, that as well? What, what has been your international experience? Uh, I wouldn't say international experience, mostly like because my university is New York University Abu Dhabi, so yep. the sort of theatre pedagogy was mostly like American theatre, and then I went to New York and I uh, did a studio, did studio classes there as well. So it was mainly like American centric, so not necessarily international. But I did a couple of productions in university, so we had like a production within the university every year. So I did that. I also acted in various like. Um, theatre major students final capstone projects. I see. So I came in those as well. And then in New York when I was studying at the Lee Strasberg Theatre and Film Institute, um, I acted in like a production within that as well. So I think you've been quite involved in the scene uh, when it comes to international in other countries as well and such. To some extent. So <laughs> with regard to that then Shalne, what exactly do you see are the common differences when it comes to not maybe comparing in our, the national theatre industry in Sri Lanka and also maybe in other countries. What are the common differences that you may see? Um, I feel like, uh, at least personally as an actor in, in, in the places that I have acted, I feel like the actors had a lot of agency over there. That was sort of like directors would give actors a certain um, guideline of what it's supposed to look like, but the actors would have full autonomy over like what the character becomes. Yeah, the freedom to yeah, make the, your own decisions. Yeah, and like what the character is, is basically kind of up to the actor. So it's interesting because the characters 
became products of the actors and then the director's job would be to kind of put it all together and see like the vision of the piece as a whole yeah. is what I felt from my experiences so I felt like um, the actor had a lot more agency I guess there than in some of the stuff I um, I, some of the, than, than what some of the people I've spoken to here speak about when they talk about their acting experience. Yeah. That's like one difference I guess. Okay. Julie, anything you would want to add with regard to that in terms of, I'm sure you've seen some international pieces as well and productions. Of course, of course, of course. What do you think, of, what do you think are the most common differences you may witness when it comes to our theatre industry and uh, international industries? I think um, we're, 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 we're not short of talent. I think there's a lot of, dif there might be a very, very minute amount of differences, mm -hmm. but uh, talent is not one of them. And I feel, you know, uh, Questioning the differences is a disservice to what we do here as actors in Sri Lanka, especially here, um, who do it um, mainly on a part-time basis. And uh, the talent that flows, flows through, people who do it on a part-time basis, is <coughs> sorry, is on the same level as those who do it on a full-time basis on yeah. an international level. Um, as Charlie very, very clearly and very truly said, uh, it's the it's the it's the it's the level that is set in those international uh, formats or, or in those portfolios that uh, we are trying to achieve. And there are many productions in Sri Lanka that have achieved that. So I don't know very much about the differences. I see a lot of similarities. Exactly. Now, Julian, with on that note as well, now you see drama has quite evolved. It started all the way back in the King's era yeah. as well and it has evolved through colonization and is now quite prevalent in the society as well. What do you think is the evolution of drama in Sri Lanka. Now we have local, we have local productions, we have national competitions also when it comes to drama and theatre. What's your perspective on the evolution that you have seen of drama in Sri Lanka? Well, I think from the time, I'm, I'm, I, it, I find it hard to comment uh, for what it was yeah. in the yesterday. But uh, from the time I started till now, I think there's, a, there's major improvements. Because we have been, or we are being exposed to the international stage. And um, due to the international stage, there's a lot of, again, I just, the, the word talent just keeps mm -hmm. coming into my mind. Because of the, that exposure, everyone, now, I mean, you take even online, you've got YouTube, so many platforms yeah. which you can follow, which you know, this is, the, this is the, the level, this is the stage, this is what it should be. So everyone's trying to achieve that level. So, I mean, even, even though it's done on a part-time basis, or even though it's done on a first-come, first basis, mm -hmm. it's still, we are, we're trying to achieve that level. So from the time uh, I knew theatre till now, I think the major difference is the, the access to what the international stage is yeah. and trying to achieve that level. Exactly. Anything That's from it. your end on that, Stalin, your, what do you think about the evolution of drama and theatre in Sri Lanka? Um, I guess, like, similar to what Julian saying, I don't really know how it is in the King's era, obviously, but like now, what I'm seeing is that there's a lot of so, sort of smaller companies and sort of like um, things that need less like resources as to begin with, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Where like you can like a lot of a lot of different companies are starting to do smaller scale productions mm -hmm. and sort of um, people who weren't necessarily the big players when I started out, but there were like, you know, a couple of people who are well known and well renowned in the theatre industry, yeah. they would sort of um, dominate the theatre scene, which is great, they do obviously great productions. But it's nice to see like smaller scale um, artists coming up with like smaller projects and different kinds of projects, device theatre and things like that. So like I think I haven't been here in the past few years, so I can't really speak for it, but I've been seeing a lot of people with that kind of an idea to come in with like different kinds of ideas, different ways of making theatre, different ways of even viewing theatre. Yeah. And I know that COVID has like sort of brought this down kind of badly, exactly. but I guess an opening that COVID might bring is to um, is to implement a lot, of, lot more small scale, mm. low budget, kind of working with the resources you have around you to make a, a okay. production. Um, I think that is an opportunity that COVID might be providing, even though obviously it has like brought a lot of theatre companies and the drama so, scene. So uh, with that then Shalini, I think, uh, do you think opportunity has evolved as well with uh, the with drama and theatre evolving in Sri Lanka? Do you see more opportunities or less opportunities when it comes to being involved in drama or theatre? Honestly, that's a difficult question for me to answer because I haven't been based here for a long yeah. time. But I do think because of COVID, it's just become more difficult just because, I mean, there's Less pe people have less time to be giving to something like theatre, also theatre is like the live art format yeah. makes it difficult to even conduct theatre in sort of a COVID environment. So I guess the challenge is to try and have theatre in an environment where like live performance is almost dangerous or difficult. Like how can you have theatre in a post-COVID world or in a COVID world right now? That would be the challenge 
I guess so I think it has become more difficult mm -hmm. because of the things that COVID poses and because that has changed everyone's life right. such that we don't have maybe the free okay. time to be doing theatre anymore, especially considering that in this country it's not well paid as a profession yes. or not paid at all. Most often I believe in the English theatre scene, so it's just difficult I think for people to commit to something like theatre in this time. Yeah. But uh, there are there are a lot of opportunities if you're taking um, if you're taking theatre like as you correctly mentioned, there's a lot of uh, smaller smaller theatre groups that are coming up with the confidence to perform. Yeah. I think uh, you know the platforms like the the internet has has such a wide yeah. widely spread platform that the confidence is now built amongst those who just had a tiny little idea. That's true. So. Uh, if you take the English theatre sector in Sri Lanka, everyone wants to support each other in some way or another. So even a little idea can spark into a production. But of course, of course, right now, I, I can't take COVID into consideration yeah. because you know. Regardless of COVID, yeah. then uh, Julian, I think you've been much more involved in the local theatre industry as well for the re in the recent years. Yeah. Have you seen an evolution of opportunities in Sh in Sri Lanka as well with regard to someone who wants to join uh, acting with a fresh start? Yeah. Do you think opportunities have evolved or has it? Reduced think, or increased? Of course, I think opportunities will always evolve if hard work is put into those opportunities. Mm -hmm. You can't just walk into something and expect this opportunity to take over your life and suddenly be propelled, you know, to uh, a different uh, or just be propelled to the top. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen in theatre. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it. You've been in theatre, you know, uh, Shalini is in theatre, of course. An opportunity will always lead you with the hard work put in, will always lead you to a good place. So if you come in with the right mindset, you will grow. So those opportunities, if you can grasp it, if you can take it with hard work, mm -hmm. you will of course reach the top. So how has the hard work been which you put in, uh, Julian? Have you, has it, is it, has it been more than sports or do you think sports is much, uh, it's a commitment you put for acting and sports similar? Or is it very different when it comes to uh, um, the commitment yeah. you put for both? So that's, that's a nice, that's a lovely question because mm -hmm. um, something like that I answered a long time back mm -hmm. because um, while, while transitioning from sports into the theatre industry, um, for me I always felt it was an easy transition or mm -hmm. I thought it was an easy transition whereas it, it wasn't because theatre is a sport in itself. Right. The work you put into theatre, not just the after hours, because okay, you go for your rehearsals, you go for your production, whatever that happens on stage, you don't see the back end of it. Even if you go for a rehearsal, you don't know what the actor actually puts into the work, right? You get a script and you go for the rehearsal, the, the actor would know the script. But how does that actor know the script? Does he, does he or she come for the production or come for the rehearsal unprepared? No. There's hours and hours that go behind it, right? Exactly. So it's a sport of its own. Away from that, um, just acting on stage, you're on stage for what, two hours, two and a half hours, sometimes mm. even three hours, right? right. The, 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 the physicality of that, to be on stage, to impersonate or, or to play a character in, in a production that is not even physical, still takes a lot of physicality and a lot of hard work and a lot of fitness put into your system. Okay, exactly. fitness not just physically, mentally, mentally as well. <laughs> man, that, that's, that's a lot of work you've got to put in. you're being watched. And you're, every single you're second. You're being watched. And, and it's, not, it's, not, it's not even, I mean, if you're just, if you're just sitting down and, and speaking, mm -hmm. that's still a lot of effort that's put in. Because you've got to project. You've got to project what you're saying. You've got to enunciate what you're saying. So even that, there's a lot of work that goes into this. It's a sport of its own. And I would stand on my, I would stand on my feet, both my feet, with both my hands up and say it's as I tough see. as a sport. I think those are some thought-filled words we heard from you, Julian. I'm sure you would have some inspiring words to say as well, Charlie, with regard to that, the amount of commitment and hard work you put into being involved in theatre. Yeah, I'm sure I it doesn't look as easy at is, as it is. I think for sure, because I mean, if you're not convinced about the character you're playing, nobody else is going to be either. Mm -hmm. So to get to that level, even in your own head or like in, in your own physicality is so difficult and it's, it's it's, it's easy to take for granted things like physicality, things like movements, things like body language, things like tone, but all of those things matter so much to who the character is that you're playing. Yeah. So it's just so much work to sort of almost become somebody else within sort of a play or within, within, within a vision that somebody else maybe has for, for a production. And I think most of the work for me when it comes to um, playing a character or like performing on stage, is sort of being attuned to the other person in the room with you. Like constantly being aware that you're feeding off somebody else and you're playing, you're playing off someone else. 
and I think the best thing about acting is being able to feed off somebody else yeah. and being able to sort of um, get energy from someone else when you can't find it within yourself. You're like, give it to me, and then yeah. and then you get that energy from the other person. I think that's yeah. the most exhilarating thing, and that's why it feels like a team sport even for me. Exactly. It is, it, is, it, is, it is a team sport because yeah. the famous saying goes, acting is reacting. Uh, yeah. That's true. I think I feel that we can truly sense the passion that you all have and the hard work and commitment you all put as well. I'm sure it doesn't look as easy as it is, so it's definitely something that we all should think about when joining the acting industry as well. With that, we're now moving on to a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more on this topic. Welcome back. Today we are speaking on drama and theatre in Sri Lanka. Now, joining us as guests is Julian Anderson and Shalini Korea. Earlier we spoke on their experiences in drama and theatre in Sri Lanka and what they have put into with regard to their hard work and commitment. Now, moving on into discussion, uh, Julian, I think what we also want to address here is the gap that we see between English singular and Tamil theatre in Sri Lanka. We, I think we would see a lack of collaboration between these three linguistics in, in terms of drama and theatre. What's your perspective with regard to that and what's the reason exactly you would say? So I, I agree, mm -hmm. there, are, um, there is a gap between all three languages and I'm yet to see, actually I did see one, yeah. but I'm yet to see more productions with all three languages. I don't really know why there is such a, a difference between all three languages, but I mean, I would love to get to the bottom of that. Maybe Shalini could uh, answer that question. Yes, Shalini, what's your perspective with regard to why exactly is there a lack? I'm sure there is not no collaboration, but there is a definitely a lack of collaboration between English yeah. theatre enthusiasts, singular and, and Tamil as well. What's the reason behind all of that? I can only guess, but my my thought is that the those communities actually tend to be kind of separate mm -hmm. to a large extent, and like you said, catering to different audiences yeah. is the observation I have made. So if the if there is like less um, sort of intersection between those communities, mm -hmm. then it's very easy to get siloed into like singing yeah. Tamil, like English, like three different sort of streams. And I think that that definitely is something lacking, just because. Um, we kind of have three different theatre industries running at the same time right. that don't collaborate with each other. Um, and I think it's important to have them collaborate with each other if you want to like have a single theatre industry or have, um, yeah. And I think most of them are also location based as well. I think we see Colombo as mostly Singhala, mostly English and Singhala as well and then moving on to our other districts we see even some Tamil performances playing on as well. And I think um, Moving on to our, into our discussion, I think one thing we also would like to address is the sustenance as an actor. Now, I'm sure both of you all come from different perspectives with regard to that. You have been giving a, um, a director's perspective and you've yeah. an actor's point of view as well. I think a gap that we have witnessed from Singhala the industry and English is that most English actors do not get compensated for their time and commitment spent in the theatre industry. However, we see that some singular actors do get compensated for their time and um, work that they spend in the industry. What's the reason behind this pay gap, uh, Julian? What do you think as a director that yeah. there's a... What do you think about this pay gap between singular and English industry with regard to theatre? Yeah, so I think that's a, a very controversial yes. topic. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to singular, singular theatre, I can't give in my opinion, but with regard to English theatre, maybe my my opinion might matter because mm -hmm. I've been a part of it. So I think uh, if you're talking about the pay gap and uh, non-paying uh, theatre groups, so uh, first of, firstly, it's on volunteer basis. Mm -hmm. That's the first part of it. So if you don't, if you if you want to get into a production that pays you, maybe you shouldn't get into a production that is on a voluntary basis that doesn't pay. So don't go into a production expecting to get paid when you when you're not going to get paid. Mm -hmm. That's the first part. Second part of it has a lot to do with finances or financing a production. Financing a production itself is, is, is so vast. It's so vast. Just, just the production itself, putting it on stage, will cost you a lot. And especially if it's an international uh, production, if it's brought down from abroad, it costs you a lot. You gotta pay, you know, licenses. Um, per show, you gotta pay a license, then you gotta bring it down, you gotta pay a license for that as well. So that cost in itself, 
of course you get you get uh, ways of income also but I'm, if i'm talking about the cost first mm-hmm. um, then you get uh, away from the production itself you get um, the set sounds lighting costumes that's just the, the tip of that's the, i think the foundation with yeah, regard to bring a production that's that's the that's, that's just that's just the the tip of the the iceberg so that cost of it maybe you can cover it up with the ticket sales but how do you compensate the actors after that because maybe some productions make a profit but it's also a very small profit it's a minute profit so how do you divide that amongst people right so what happens is most theater groups or most english theater groups in sri lanka the the profit they earn from one production they put it into yeah. the next production to kick start it and um, those profits i mean you can't share it or you can't divide it amongst um, your actors you yeah. can't you can't physically do it how do you how do you pay someone who puts in how do you how do you categorize someone who puts in more hard work to someone who puts in less you can't categorize that because everyone puts in their their due share of hard work into a production so it's very hard to you know it's very hard to pay people yeah. especially when you know sponsorships in the theater in the indus theater industry sponsorships are very hard to come by mm-hmm. and and um, you know ticket sales uh, the amount sri lankans pay for a ticket is between 1000 rupees and 4000 rupees mm-hmm. on a normal basis 4000 being the the front seats and 1000 rupees being at the back mm-hmm. and then if you take back any seats would range from 500 rupees to again 1000 rupees mm-hmm. so with those small amounts you can't pay your actors it's tough it's very tough maybe maybe you can probably cover their transport or give mm-hmm. them something small to eat but paying someone if you do the finance you do the costings of it yeah. it's it's really tough thank you for giving us your perspective on that june i think before i come to you with the countering questions on that i like to hear shalini's perspective as well as what do you think about english majority of english actors not being compensated for their time and commitment being involved in the industry yeah I think it's really sad uh, that 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 there's no infrastructure really in place to allow this to happen like you can say I agree that there isn't enough money circulating within the within the English theatre scene in general to be able to adequately compensate it and I think that leads to like only people who can afford to be doing a non paying thing with their time to be able to be actors even in the English theatre scene so I think it already sort of biases the theatre scene to be um to to not have people who can't afford to be there you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's just very it's it's very sad that that's the way things are i think that i do think though that there is something important in having even a nominal sort of fee or payment i do understand that like being able to compensate people for the amount of hours they put in is a very difficult task but even some sort of nominal sum i feel might help to boost the sort of respect or exactly. taking an actor's job seriously mm-hmm. because i feel like choreographers and people like that do get paid but then actors it's sort of something you love to do so you're coming to do it because you love mm-hmm. to do it but it is a job in itself yeah. um, and it's not necessarily viewed that way here maybe mm-hmm. because they are not being compensated so that might be something something to think about yeah now i think like shalini mentioned as well and julian bringing up to how you mentioned how data is done on a voluntary basis so i'm sure you see like cast of 100 or 200 members coming yeah. on even to be involved on a voluntary basis yeah because of their passion and love towards drama and theater yeah, in sri yeah. lanka i just want to ask from you as well julian i'm not obviously pointing out to you as well but don't you think this passion is being exploited in some way or is it not being given the due respect it should deserved i think the word exploitation in in this context mm-hmm. is taken out of context all right because the word exploitation means you go into it knowing you want something out of it and you don't get it but you are being utilized for that matter here you are going into something knowing that it's voluntary basis and you are expecting a payment out of it that's not exploitation that's called uneven expectations if you are if you are going into something voluntary i'm sure the people who volunteer for uh, an ngo mm-hmm. project don't go in expecting a payment so how yeah. can you come into a voluntary project such as a theater production and expect a payment if you want a payment you want to make it a job then you'll have to look for productions or theater companies that offer payments but if you're coming into a production that does not offer i think it's a little unfair for the production and the theater group the directors and so on to expect a payment that's yeah. what i feel i think those were some good points uh, raised by you i think the more we volunteer or spend more time on this we could hopefully see an advancement and 
mass evolution of drama and theater in sri lanka yeah. i think uh, so sarani with regard to that as well do you think that this pay gap that we see is limiting the advancement of theater in sri lanka do you i like mentioned uh, the respect given to the industry or even putting it on as a full time commitment do you think this whole pay gap is the reason why we aren't really excelling as much as we want to in uh, theater and drama in sri lanka i think it sort of like the fact that actors aren't paid makes it less respected and then that makes actors be, be not be continue to not be paid if that makes sense it sort of aids each other i feel like it's also important for audiences um in colombo and in sri lanka to value the art made by local artists the same way that they value all these international productions that they've you know heard of um like in in international like in other countries and therefore have a have respect for it but have less respect for sort of the productions that people have put as much time and as much like as you didn't point out have as much talent um and are putting on these great productions here um I, and also understand that home grown local productions can be as good or even better yes. than those productions and just because they are they don't have as much money going into them doesn't mean anything so if audiences are willing to pay higher amounts to watch international um international actors i don't see why they should think that they should spend less on local actors if mm-hmm. that makes sense That's true. so it's also a problem about like the audiences and what they expect exactly. so that is that is actually we're talking about a change of mindset mm. and more of a change of culture That's true. because in sri lanka anything international is gold <laughs> unfortunately Yeah. Am I correct? Anything international is good. So you would pay twenty thousand, twenty five thousand rupees for a ticket mm-hmm. to watch an international production. Yeah. But anything over thousand rupees for a <laughs> for a local production <laughs> you mean, with with talk. talented actors in it and with a stellar production place and a beautiful set with beautiful costumes and great lighting and beautiful sounds coming out. Thousand rupees for that? Oh no, no no no. Eight hundred rupees. Yeah, you got a deal. But twenty thousand rupees, twenty five thousand. Fifty thousand rupees for a ticket to watch, you know, an international artist come down and perform. No problem, take my money. Exactly. But when he comes to local, it's 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 a change of culture, mm-hmm. and um, to ch- and it, and a change of mindset, right? Because what's local is not that important because international mm-hmm. is gold, right? So that change of culture and change of mindset will have to come from the youth. Mm-hmm. Will have to be me and you who make a change. If not, the the future does not hold. um the best stats for theater those are definitely some very true points julian i think uh, so how exactly would you inspire or actually uh, how would you approach sponsors per se why do we see a limitation with regard to sponsoring when it comes to uh, from our local uh, now local market as well i think um, we see much more sponsors coming up for most international performances as opposed to the local performances going on how would you approach these companies and tell them that it's worth sponsoring local performances as well what i but yeah. i want to want to know what is the current gap we see with sponsors sponsoring current uh, local productions is there a gap per se yes if i if i hit the nail on the head mm-hmm. um sponsors in sri lanka do not find it uh, viable or profitable to sponsor a local production which is why they won't invest but if it's an international production of course whatever you want we will invest we have the budget for it so we will invest because we see the gain or the get back yeah, from it demand. there is a demand for it so they see it but for a local production it's very tough mm-hmm. uh, only if they see a value in it they will invest that's a company right we are not talking about uh, uh, an uh, an ngo we're talking about a company a company will always want its profits they'll always yeah. want a return on their investment so they don't see that so to answer your question about how do you convince a sponsor through various means how can you show them that they could also profit yeah, by sponsoring so these local exactly. productions um the i will it's i will answer your question with the question itself yeah the only way you can show them is to literally show them a return on investment because i mean a lot of people who do theater don't show them the finances of it this is what you will gain in return I mean of course we'll say we'll say this is what you are going to do this is blah blah but if you put it on a spreadsheet and if you show sponsors okay this is what you will gain in finance wise okay in number wise this is what you're going to gain maybe that's the way we can move mm-hmm. into these sponsors but of course of course i feel sponsors need to all patch in large companies they they have their budgets they can sponsor they feel you know it's viable but i feel the 
companies in Sri Lanka also need to know that you know this is something that people do on a voluntary basis. And if I'm speaking to these companies, if they are listening right now, support the arts. I mean, support the arts. This could be your next CSR project. Support the arts. There's a lot of youth. There's a lot of kids who come into this. You know, talented people. Talented. They come into this, you know, with a dream in their heads. Trying to achieve what they want to achieve. Support them. Support the arts in Sri Lanka. Because you never know where the next Michael Jackson will come from. Mm -hmm. Not everyone good is made in America. Could be made in Sri Lanka. Exactly. So support the arts. I, I think, think Shalini, yeah, we'd like yeah. to hear your perspective as well as to what is the talent we have to really showcase that we are worth being sponsored for and we are worth the actual attention that it deserves in Sri Lanka. I think honestly the work that is created by Sri Lankan artists speak for itself. Mm -hmm. But I think like I was when Julian Song was thinking also like from the side of theatre companies in Sri Lanka or in, in the English theatre scene, I feel like that I, at least I haven't seen or I haven't heard of one cohesive sort of stance or one cohesive idea for the theory industry. I think a lot of theory companies have visions for what they want to be in the next five years, in the next ten years or what kind of things they want to produce. But I think it's important to have a, have a goal as an industry as well. I think if the industry comes together and looks at these guidelines, looks at you know all the people that they have, makes those kind of spreadsheets and budgets and thinks about like how to actually structure the industry in sort of a in, in a more, excuse me, like cohesive manner, mm -hmm. I think that that could maybe help increase the sort of um, legitimacy of the companies and the legitimacy of the industry as a whole that could incentivize companies to invest in that case. I feel like there needs to be a united front from the English theory scene that maybe we haven't seen yet and that might help. Hopefully. So those were some thought provoking statements by Julian and Shalini. So make sure like, like Julian mentioned himself, we support the art and develop Sri Lanka theatre as a whole. With that, we're now moving on to a short commercial break. Make sure you stay tuned for more on this topic. Welcome back everyone. Today I'm speaking to you about drama and theatre in Sri Lanka and joining us as guests is Julian Anderson and Shalini Korea. Early on we spoke about their experiences in drama in Sri Lanka and the current obstacles and challenges we see with regard to drama and theatre advancing in Sri Lanka. I think uh, now moving on, um, Shalini, I start with you on this. What do you, we see, um, we see I think lack of drama and theatre or even the awareness per se in other districts in Sri Lanka, in maybe in rural areas and such. How exactly do you think we could expand the concept of drama in more, much more in schools or in communities, in the village areas? I think like having theatre as a part of curriculum or having it as a, as a part of you know, language studies or literature studies and having it actually being put into practice and not just read as like a textbook or something could be an interesting way to start that up. Mm -hmm. Because I think at the end of the day there can be like Julian was saying million dollar production but there can right. also be a few kids in uniform um, on their mm. uh, in the front of their classroom doing a performance and that too could 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 function as theatre you know like broadening the idea of what like a good performance is or what good theatre is is something important but I also think a lot of like um, a lot of the singer and Tamil theatre troops do function in these parts and they actually have travelling theatre troops as well going around the country mm. um, so I think that's that's really good the question is whether there will be a market for that um, for English theatre to be doing a similar thing, I guess. That's how not something I'm... Um, exactly, yeah, sure that's about. true. And Julian, what do you think about that as well? How exactly could... Now, I think um, with most local English productions, it's basically uh, Colombo-centric. As I would say, I think it caters to a specific crowd in Colombo, people who are, who are involved also from Colombo as well. How exactly could we expand this? I'm sure the idea of drama and theatre could benefit someone very much, even in their rural areas as well, in their soft skills and life skills. How do you think we could expand this to most rural areas in our country? Okay, so if you're asking me about expanding on a language basis, mm -hmm. I feel it's tough to expand on language basis due to the language barrier. Yeah. yeah. So it's tough to expand on a language basis. But if you're if you're asking me about the tools, mm -hmm. now that is what you can expand on. You can take the tools which theatre teaches you and utilize that outstation, out of Colombo. I mean we could be outstation for someone outstation, but but exactly. out of, any, I mean, island wide, you can take the tools and expand on that. But I don't think you can take the language and expand on it because mm -hmm. there is a barrier. 
So I would say utilize your tools. I think most, if most local theatre um, houses could also maybe reach out to maybe even source more actors from these rural areas, we could see much more interest and awareness in them from these rural communities as well, hopefully. And uh, moving on, Julian, also I would like to ask, where do you would like to see uh, drama and theatre in Sri Lanka in the next 10 years or even 5 years? What do you, no sorry, what do you think would be seen for drama and theatre in Sri Lanka in another 10 years? Okay, so I would, I hate to say it, but I would love to see Sri Lankan theatre on an international level. I hate to say it because I know deep down that our standards are on these international levels and some of our standards surpass international levels. But not a lot of people see it. So in 10 years, I wish that, you know, we could hit those international standards and I hope, you know, instead of us going to larger countries, Singapore, you know, West End or even, you know, Broadway to watch plays, I want other people to come to this country to watch us. Exactly. Hopefully that's that's a goal. And Shani, what, what would you like to, what, would, what do you think Sri Lanka would be in terms of drama and theatre in the next 5 to 10 years, hopefully? I mean, it's difficult to say what it would be, but what, what I think it could be and what I sort of hope Hopefully. that it would be um, is actually kind of different to what, what Julian was saying, was, but kind of the whole mindset of what theatre is mm. as, as an art form, as a concept, it would involve that sort of changing. And I don't necessarily mean only in China, I mean globally as well. I feel like we are talking all this time about these big budget productions, you know, costumes like, oh, all of these are necessary costs for theatre, but what if they weren't, you know, what if, what if theatre became something more small scale, something more accessible, something, you know, you have an open space, you have a few people who are interested, you have the clothes that they're wearing right now, what will they, break, what will they do um, in, in that space together? How will they make art? You know, something like that. I would like to see theatre not being only uh, legitimised when it is on a stage where a lot of money has been spent, where a lot of glamour and lights and glitz is there, you know, I don't even know if yeah. this is the word, but like, it doesn't necessarily have glamour, to be that. Yeah. It's, I want to see theatre that's more small scale, that's more sort of devised, that's different, that brings a lot of people who aren't necessarily actors together to, to, to perform, because I think that the best thing about theatre is that anybody can do it but it maybe doesn't feel like that way all the time yeah. making it feel, making everyone feel like you can be a part of something like that reducing the barriers to entry to theater like that i would see as like a vision for what english theater could become in this country in the future Hopefully. i agree also. with you on the reducing the barriers to um, entry for theater mm -hmm. but i feel how do you draw an audience if it's small scale because yeah. we live in a world where the most talented person does not get the most recognition. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? That's what I mean yeah. by the mindset shift I guess and that's why I was saying it's a, it's a difficult thing because the whole world seems to glamorize one thing and not something else. Exactly. So in like an ideal world, people would be able to appreciate the art form for what it is and not for how much money went into it or for how famous that person is or you know who their sponsor is. And Shalin, would that like to hear as... Idea. Of course, it's difficult to achieve. We we'll have to know as well what exact now since you started in school I think uh, drama and theatre what exactly were your learning sources also your experience gathering ventures when you were starting on drama and theatre? I think a lot of it was learning on your feet um, because it's not like we were trained to be actors or anything. It's like ah oh, you're cast okay come and you're playing this role. Mm -hmm. It's like oh how do I do it? And I think there was super there are super supportive directors um, yeah. in Sri Lanka and I have had a bunch of really supportive directors who I think really helped my journey as an actor and stuff like that. So I think that I had the privilege of having that access in my school days to start off something like that. So I think that's what I had that many people might not have. And even something like being a director, for a school kid to be able to be a director, you know, um, that that's something that's accessible to people anywhere if they sort of are encouraged to do that, if it's given um, the kind of respect that it deserves, if it's given the time and the effort that it deserves then I think anyone in school can be a director, anyone in school can be an actor, just changing mindsets such that it's not like only a few people can be directors, they need to be this age group, they need to be this kind of person. You know what exactly, I mean? Exactly, yeah. 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 And Julian, I think you joined Dharma and Theatre after school. Yes. So what exactly were your learning sources that you gathered and also what experience did you gather ventures from in terms of starting Dharma and Theatre in Sri Lanka? Um, I was actually lucky to work with a lot of um, people who who took me under their arm and taught me people like Jehan Aloysius, mm -hmm. uh, Jerome, 
um, Jehan Bastian, Kevin Neven, you know, a uh, lot of people, maybe if I'm forgetting names, I apologize for that. But there was a lot of people who took me under their arms and taught me what theater is. Because when you, when all, all I see is um, the, what I see on TV, teledrama. <coughs> and that style of acting or that style of theater is completely different to mm -hmm. stage drama. So I was, I was fortunate enough that I had people who taught me what it was. And that's how I grew. And I wish, you know, more people have uh, entrance or, or visibility to people like that. And maybe whatever I learn, maybe I could pass it on to someone else. So maybe I could be a stepping stone for someone. Hopefully. And my final question to both of you all actually is uh, in winding up our interview today is how exactly would you um, inspire someone, someone who is fresh, who don't really have the, any acting background per se, what are the opportunities they could reach out to to start on this interest? How could they begin their journey in drama and teeth in Sri Lanka? From a fresh perspective, Julian, you first. Um, I would say, I would say first take a step and reach out. Because there are so many casting calls, there are so many auditions. Of course, I'm not talking about these days. These days it's quite, mm. uh, you know, it's, it's a yeah. ghost town. But uh, there are, away from these days, there are so many auditions. I mean, take a shot, see what it is. I mean, you might get rejected, you might not, but most often, uh, when it comes to English theatre, you don't get rejected. You, there's always a place for you. So, reach out. Definitely. Take that step. And Shalini, your final words on that as well. How could someone fresh, without an acting background, start on their journey in acting? I think a big thing to overcome is that sense of imposter syndrome where like, oh, I've not done acting, I don't know how to act, I don't like to talk in front of people and then sort of not like taking that first step like Julian was saying. I think it's important to just take that first step and then sort of see where it takes you, see whether it's something you enjoy doing, see what you want to do that you want to like, do you want to act, do you want to write, do there are so many different things you can do in the theatre scene, you can be on stage, off stage, backstage wherever you are writing in, in, in the background. I feel like if anyone is interested, starting on what you're interested in is, is, is the first thing to do. And I think a lot of people in the English theatre scene in, in Kalama and Srinaka are very supportive and also quite closely linked. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it, it is, I, I haven't found it hard to reach out. And with that, uh, I, we want to thank you, Shalini Korea and Julian Anderson for joining us on today's program as guests. I think you all gave us a new and entirely different perspective on drama and TV and Sri Lanka. So thank you once again thank to both you. of you all. Thank you so much for having me. And with that, thank you to all of you as well joining in as our audience. We hope you all have been inspired and influenced to really advance and be involved in drama and TV in Sri Lanka. If you want to read this episode, make sure you all go on youtube.com. That's it for now. Stay safe and take care.